brand is basically uh, in personal branding what i would say in one word is leading by example so who do you want to be you need to act with integrity but you need to, to know who you want to be and start acting like that person welcome to another episode of the people hum interview series i'm your host divya rao and let's begin with a quick introduction of people hum People Hum is an end-to-end, one-view integrated human capital management automation platform. The winner of the 2019 Global Codi Award for HCM that is specifically built for crafted employee experiences and the future of work. We run the People Hum blog and the video channel, which receives upwards of 200,000 visitors a year, and publish around two interviews with well-known names globally every month. And now for our guest, Maria Papakosta is co-founder and director at MSC Marketing Bureau. owner of happy creations where she works with world class leaders to leverage corporate effectiveness via strategizing executive training and consulting she is a brand strategist and a personal branding expert and helps global leaders establish their online presence and optimize their digital footprint she is also the author of two publications and is a visionary leadership coach welcome maria we're extremely thrilled to have you Thank you so much. It's my honor to be with you. Thank you for inviting me and congratulations to the People Hum team for creating such a successful platform. Thank you so much and the pleasure is all ours. So, uh, Maria, of course you've had a very exciting journey this far. Can you share with our audience about how you came to be the co-founder at MSC Marketing Bureau? Okay. Um To be honest, I think everything started with a series of opportunities and decision to be taken. Um When I was back in university, my aspirations were to become a great marketing manager in product marketing. Um, I have nothing to do with product marketing, just because um, the opportunities given to me were completely different. So the decisions I had to take uh, led me to another path, which I don't regret at all. Um, so I started working in the services area, and one thing led to another. I ended up working. Um, for one of the big consulting firms um dealing with uh, hr issues um i was fortunate enough during that period to work with many leading personalities authors thought leaders ceos um which sort of um gave me the experience and the background um i have today and i was i was also very fortunate to have a great ceo mentor back then who supported my entrepreneurial spirit and that's how happy creations um was formed back then um with happy creations i was fortunate again oh, opportunities um to represent one of the big um speaker bureaus in more than 20 ca- countries um meaning that i had to work with a lot more speakers learn their backgrounds um see how they act on stage and off stage and i actually realized that um no matter how great they are they were no matter if they had a nobel prize or an olympic gold medal they all had two things in common one they were all seeking validation and two they were all trying to find a way to stand out from the crowd so that's how msc um uh, it developed and began to exist and what we realized um in MSC my partner and I was that all these people whether they are executives or speakers or consultants um yes they do need coaching yes they do need a process yes they do need how the, the how to but they also need the tools they also need a website they also need um social media campaign they also need technology So what we did at MSC is combine um the two of them together. Wow, well, it's really exciting. And I love uh, how you explained your story about finding the true calling and you eventually did that and started MSC Marketing Bureau. I think that's really exci- exciting and I know it must be really exciting doing what you do on an everyday basis. So uh Maria going forward you're also a personal branding coach, right? So As a personal branding coach, how do you help leaders bring forth their authentic leadership qualities? Well, it it all starts with self-awareness. <laughs> I'm not a psychologist, but it all starts with self-awareness. You need to know your strengths and your weaknesses. Um 
not only that, but you also need to know how others perceive you. And then you need to find out who you want to be. You need to find your authentic voice. Okay. Um, and then you need to align everything together. So who you are, put your strengths forward, spot your weaknesses and find out what you have to fine tune, what you have to correct, if I may say, what you have to learn. Um, find out how others perceive you, find out how you want to be perceived and what you want to do. It's an alignment of things. So personal branding is not about self-promotion. It's about um, what's your vision, what's the, what's the impact you want, want to make in this world and how you're going to communicate that to the world so as to stand out. Right, I agree with your point. Usually we're talking about personal branding. I mean, the way we look at it is marketing yourself. Uh, but I really like the way you explained it. I think it's, it's definitely about vision and the impact that you're seeking to create. So I think that's fantastic. Um, also, I feel now with the gig economy getting bigger, it's incumbent upon leaders to make sure that they stand out to prospective uh, employers. I feel like in a way, personal branding really helps with that. Um, right. So you've worked with a lot of thought leaders and keynote speakers with varying experiences and backgrounds. Do these factors influence your style of coaching? Uh, well, in coaching, the first thing you need to do with your client is to build rapport. Um, right. And it's not about chemistry. It's more about compatibility, being compatible with one another. So what you, what you need is, because it's a long-term process and it's a relationship that eventually must be built on trust, um, yeah. what, you need to have a common purpose and you need to have an understanding for, on from where they come from what their aspirations are so definitely the methodology and the process is the same but the approach differs um, every individual is very very unique they've got different aspirations different fears if i may say yeah. um, different weaknesses so yeah. the approach changes the emphasis changes along the way one solution doesn't fit all Right. I agree. Especially, I think it's really difficult to do what you do, but I think you clearly mastered the art. And I call it art because I read somewhere that uh, coaching is actually more art than science. And you've definitely mastered it. So it's amazing to see how you help people create a credible and strong leadership brand. Um, so going ahead, I also wanted to ask you how important is presence and influence in the corporate? Hmm. I think it is extremely, extremely important. Um, why? Um, well, we live in a very noisy world and leaders today, I, I mean, they've got so much, they, they've got such a difficult role, so many things they need to consider, so many parameters. If, if they don't have the presence, the influence and the impact, then people will not follow them. Um, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that a leader creates a vision, you know, posts it on a wall and people just follow the vision. No, I'm not saying that. Um, what I'm saying is that a leader must be a communicator and an influencer. Um, vision in, in organizations will come as a result of a collective force, not just because the leader has a vision that's that's what i believe every single individual within an organization will help the leader formulate the vision but the leader must lead that team and must guide that team to the vision so he or she needs the presence the influence the impact the trust and the respect in order to achieve that that's where presence and influence come in great great answer um, so also, just to sort of wrap this up, um, you've had a very successful career in the corporate world. What would you advise recent graduates who are trying their luck uh, in, their, in today's job market? Okay, uh, good one. Actually, I, I've held many interviews in the past on, on behalf of my clients. And, and one of the things that always surprised me is how graduates were looking for a very senior role um, as soon as they left college or university. 
um, without any prior work experience, they were looking for a managerial role, if I may say. Uh, yeah. So my advice is you don't need to rush things. Um, seniority doesn't come with a master's degree or a PhD in, in the business world. It comes with your work and it will come quickly if you work for it. Um, but um, at the same time, my advice to them would be <clears throat> to treat themselves as a brand, um, to start thinking what we, we, we started in our discussion saying about self-awareness. What are their strengths that they need to put forward? What are their weaknesses? What do they need to develop? And how do they want to be perceived by future employers? Um, they need to start branding themselves and communicating that brand. Brand is basically uh, in personal branding, what I would say in one word is leading by example. So who do you want to be? You need to act with integrity, but you need to, to know who you want to be and start acting like that person. And you also need to be realistic in your targets. <laughs> That, that's a great answer and that's great advice. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, also, you so much. thank you so much for agreeing to be a part of the Leaders Hum series. I think this was a great talk, great discussion that we had and it's greatly going to benefit our audience. Uh, I myself personally took a lot from it. So thank you so much, Maria. For My honor. honor. The honor is all mine. Thank you so much. I wish you all the best. Thank you very, very much.